Bitcoin and virtually all of the cryptocurrencies have had a very sizable and much needed and expected pullback this week. There have been two main focal points for the pullback. Rumors and speculation of a Chinese government attack against the free market have caused most of the consternation. But secondly and most laughably were comments from Jamie Demon. They say it diamond so as to not be too obvious about his backing. The lead fraudster of the virulently fraudulent company JP Morgan who said that Bitcoin is a fraud. This coming from a man whose entire industry of banking is based on the fraud of fractional reserve banking which is only made legal by the fraud of government which is based solely on extortion which they call taxation and based on a currency which is created by the fraudulent Federal Reserve which is a central bank which is a tenet of communism and is an outright Ponzi scheme whose sole purpose is to impoverish nearly everyone in society and to enrich the 0.00001%. So to have Jamie Demon say that Bitcoin, which is just math, is a fraud, comes at the height of ridiculousness. Not to mention, this is no different than the CEO of Barnes & Noble calling Amazon.com a fraud for the pure fact that it has technologically innovated Barnes & Noble into the dustbin of history, as Bitcoin, or at least cryptocurrencies as a whole, will soon relegate central banking and fiat currencies. Just look at the US dollar from the cryptocurrencies point of view. And you can see that it is the Federal Reserve note, not Bitcoin, which is the fraud. If the US dollar were a cryptocurrency, it would be the one called the fraud. The US dollar has or is no max cap. In other words, it can be inflated to infinity, as opposed to Bitcoin, which has a hard limit of 21 million Bitcoins that will ever be created. The US dollar is pre-mined. One of the death knells of a cryptocurrency is that it is pre-mined. In general, this means that the creators of the currency create the currency and give it to themselves before allowing others to purchase it. This is the height of fraud in the cryptocurrency space, but this is how all US dollars are created. They are pre-mined by the Federal Reserve before they are allowed to trickle down to the rest of us poor slaves. The US dollar has no transparency. Unlike Bitcoin, the US dollar has very little transparency as to where it came from and which potentially criminal organization like the US federal government, IRS, or any of the other three-letter agencies it has flowed through. The US dollar isn't backed by cryptography. While Bitcoin and all cryptocurrencies have proof of ownership through very secure cryptography, the owner of dollars can be anyone who is friends with the Federal Reserve. The US dollar isn't open source. Unlike Bitcoin, which anyone in the world can review their code, the dollar is not open source and therefore all manner of fraud can be perpetrated in the system. With the US dollar you don't control your private keys. With Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies you hold complete control of your currency by holding your private keys. With dollars, any criminal government agency or the central bank can take control of your dollars at any time. And the US dollar isn't voluntary. While using and owning Bitcoin is completely voluntary, usage and acceptance of US dollars are backed by violence. If you don't accept dollars, you can and will be kidnapped and thrown in a cage. Should you try to escape, you most likely will be killed. So which currency is the fraud again? Here's how we know that Bitcoin is not a fraud and fractional reserve banking, of which JP Morgan is part of, is. One requires the support of the government. Guess which? Here's a hint. Thomas Jefferson once said, it is error alone which needs the support of government. Truth can stand by itself. Does Demon really think Bitcoin is a fraud? Or is it more likely that Jamie sees Bitcoin as a serious risk to his criminal business model? After all, JP Morgan filed a patent, which is also a criminal act to use violence against others using your ideas for a Bitcoin killer competitor in 2013. Things aren't going all that well for the US dollar after all. Year to date, this has been the worst performance for the US dollar from January to September since 1986. So maybe Demon is just getting very, very nervous. After all, his banking industry is known for the opening of fake customer accounts and constant manipulation of interest rates, exchange rates, and asset prices. The dollar is crashing. The US government, which cloisters crony capitalists like JP Morgan, is bankrupt. Is it any wonder that Jamie lashes out and says that he'd fire any JP Morgan employee who trades Bitcoin? It's his biggest competition. It threatens to take down not only his entire industry, but the entire US government and the Federal Reserve. It can and it will. The cat is out of the bag. 
Their time has come to a close. Sure, Bitcoin could go down to $2,000 in a panic, or it could even go to zero if enough things all went wrong at the same time. But you know what would happen next? The next better Bitcoin would quickly take its place. The only way to stop this evolution in money and banking is to turn off the power and the internet. And don't think the globalists don't consider that to be an option. There's a reason they keep bringing up the term internet kill switch. That's just how evil they are. And that's just how scared they are that the jig is up. Those politicians, government agents, and central bankers who aren't hung in the streets once the mob figures out who has been screwing them all these years will at the very least have to meld back into society and get a real job for the first time in their life. Jamie Dimon even uses the example of his daughter who owns Bitcoin to say that Bitcoin is a fraud because his daughter owns it. It's quite the opposite, Jamie. You're the fraud. You somehow managed to procreate a daughter smart enough to see where we're all headed. At least one good thing came out of you, Jamie. Good luck with that whole collapsing system thing you're a part of. We'll be over here laughing. You care about your success and your financial future. You work hard, and all you want to do is be left alone and not let others rip your savings and privacy out from under you. But you see that something in the system is broken. Banks are still making bad decisions with your money. Your financial privacy is being invaded at every step. It's getting harder to access your savings internationally, if you can at all. And you know that your country is on a path to destroying its currency and destroying your future buying power with it. It's not your fault. The system is designed to fail, and central banks and authoritarian governments are architecting your financial demise. Fortunately, thanks to a new game-changing technology, freedom-minded people worldwide are leaving the central banks behind and getting on the road to real wealth, privacy, and asset protection. It's not offshore banking. It's a system that lets you own your own international private bank. And unlike traditional private banks, anyone can afford it because you can get started for free. It doesn't care about borders, and it gives you access to your assets anywhere in the world and keeps your transactions as private as you want them to be. The nationless private banking system is easy to learn and use. And to prove it, we're offering you a free video training series. Never again will you worry about keeping your financial life private or that the buying power of your savings is being wrecked by forces outside of your control. Plus, inside the video series, you'll discover how to qualify to have your first deposit in your new bank made by us just for learning how to protect yourself from your central bank. Learn more about the nationless private banking system by clicking the link. And within days, you'll be on the road to more protection and more profits with your own private bank.